Oh, what a lovely campfire. Oh, this is such a nice night. Oh, what a lovely campfire. <laughs> Mr. Dominic, wait. Do please tell me everything you know about Paul. So, you have Mr. Benedictus' history class, don't you? <sighs> When's the report due? <laughs> in the morning. Tomorrow morning? Back in my day, we started our homework much sooner. Well, you've come to the right place, Lucas. We remember Paul very well. Paul was here a long time ago, son. Before your father was even born, I was a boy not much older than you are now. And Paul was a prisoner aboard a ship that got blown here by a terrible storm. We saw the ship go down off the coast. We were sure they all drowned. Then they started coming to shore. One, two, three, every last one of them survived. 276 soggy sailors, soldiers, prisoners, and passengers. They said that God, the God all served, had rescued them. I didn't know much about Paul's God at the time, but I would have been grateful too if God had rescued me from that storm. So what did you do? The only thing we could do with 276 wet passengers on a cold night, we made a campfire. Paul helped put some wood on the fire. That's when it happened. All of a sudden, a poisonous snake jumped out and it bit right into Paul's hand and wouldn't let go. I was sure Paul had to be a murderer. I told everyone, only someone who had done terrible things would have so much trouble. The sea didn't kill him, but that snake bite surely would. Now, Althea, you know Paul wasn't a murderer. Well, he could have been. What happened next? Did Paul die? Did he swell up and turn purple and go like this? <coughs> Paul calmly shook the snake into the fire. We waited. And we waited, but he didn't die. He didn't even get sick. People started saying, Paul must be a god. Later on, we learned there's only one true god. He's the one who protected Paul from that snake. Paul became quite a celebrity. Publius, the chief official of the whole island, invited Paul and his friends to stay at him, stay at his home. You know, I've lived on this island for 86 years, and not once have I been invited to the chief official's house. Publius treated Paul as an honored guest. Good food, entertainment, everyone had a great time. Well, everyone except one person. I guess you mean me. I wasn't invited. No, Althea. I believe he means Publius's father. The poor man was so sick. He couldn't get out of bed. Paul went in to see him. He prayed that God would heal him. Then Paul placed his hand on it. Suddenly, Publius's father felt better. He was healed. After that, sick people came from all over the island. You might expect Paul to have gotten sick of sick people, but he prayed and every one of them was healed. Well, he sure didn't heal me. But you weren't sick, Althea. Well, I could have been. <laughs> I thought those castaways would never leave. As I always say, house gifts are like fish. After three days, they start to stink. <laughs> well, everyone was happy to have them here. Almost everyone. I figured Paul wanted to stay on the island instead of going to Rome to face a trial in front of Caesar, the ruler of the whole Roman Empire. But Paul seemed excited to go to Rome. He said he's been trying to go there for years. He felt badly that most people there didn't know about Jesus. Then one day, the weather was better for sailing. It was time for Paul to leave. We gave him and his friends all the supplies they needed and wished them a safe trip. And good evening, folks. How kind of late, aren't you, Lucas? Mr. Benedictus, I was just... Um, have you finished your report on Barnabas? Barnabas? I thought it was on Paul. That was last week. I'll see you 
and your Barnabas report in the morning. <laughs> Mr. Dunn, quick, tell me everything you know about Barnabas. <laughs> so, you have Mr. Benedictus' history, don't you? When's the report, Leo? 